happening. We have the story from CBS Austin. Arrest made an arson incident at Travis County Democratic Party office. They say a Molotov cocktail was thrown inside the office and ignited during the early morning of uh, early early morning hours. So earlier I was wrong. I thought it did, but it did. The arson suspect was recorded on security cameras and a note was left at the scene. The Austin Fire Department says their arson investigators, along with the FBI, made the arrest. Ryan Faircloth, 30, is charged with second degree felony arson and third degree felony possession of a prohibited weapon. He remains in custody at Travis County Jail under a combined $40,000 bond for both charges. Early Wednesday morning, outside, uh, an outside camera recording a man throwing a rock through the front door of the Democratic Party head, uh, office. He then came back with what appears to be an incendiary device, placed it inside the building, and then uh, the fire ignited. Damage to the building was minimized because people at the bar across the street spotted the first flames and put them out with a fire extinguisher. Last year, vandals hit the same building, spraying graffiti across the front. That's when security cameras were installed that may help police find who was responsible for the latest damage. We were talking about the other day, you know, related to this, what happens if Texas secedes or New Hampshire? And one of the things I was saying that, you know, I guess people hadn't considered is what do the Democrats in Austin do if the Republicans in Texas say we're out? Right. You can already see there's conflict between cultural factions. That's how New York is. I mean, most of New York voted red. A lot of New York did. <clears throat> and the city controls most of it. So it's like when you talk about secession, what does something like New York City do? You were there, right? You lived in yeah. the city? Yeah. yeah. I, I was driving a box truck. Mm. For, During the riots? Uh, not the riots, but like leading up to the, uh, to the 2016 election. So I would see like um, all the signs for Hillary in one place and all the Trump signs in the rest of, you know, upstate New York. Not that that should be a gauge right. of how people are going to vote, yeah. but it was wild to see that yeah. all of upstate New York is one way. It's so weird. But I, maybe, maybe it's because people in the cities are scared. They're scared to say anything. Yeah. Country versus city. True. If you put up a Trump Land. sign in an area where there's 50 Hillary signs. Hillary, I said Hillary, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but I, That's that a was, real that was saliva slip. popping my throat. Like crystal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah. But it's. I mean, maybe dangerous isn't the word, but maybe it is. And that's the problem with it. That's why we have secret voting. You know, that's why you, your yeah. voting is anonymous. Yeah. I wonder. So we, 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 we did talk about Texas. And for those that don't understand the, uh, know the context of the last episode, you know, we had we had someone from the Free State Project in New Hampshire. New Ham There's a lot of people in New Hampshire who want to secede or form their own, you know, nation state or whatever. And like a lot, a lot of people say things, you know, if, if Texas can't, it won't happen. But there's also the conversation we've had where it's like the federal government wouldn't do anything. So look at California. California says outright, we no longer will allow the feds to enforce immigration law, actually hmm. stopping them. And that's a state saying the federal government has no authority here in this regard. Hmm. And the feds say, OK, that's it. The emperor's got no clothes. Yeah. The moment California was able to say this, the moment cities in California were allowed to let, were, were allowed to let non-citizens vote, the federal government lost its legitimacy because they couldn't enforce their own laws within the country. That's going to set up a cascade effect. But the interesting thing is what happens in a state like Texas? If Texas secedes, the, the belief is the feds won't do anything. But what happens when the Democrats in Austin call for help? The feds then nationalize the National Guard in neighboring states and send them into Texas to protect, you know, the, the law and law and order. That being said, mm. that's the context. Here's the next question. If that does happen and the government does nationalize or federalize the National Guard from New York, for instance, what will the majority of the New York state Republicans in all like northern part say to the city, you know, because the people who are in the National Guard in that place probably come from some rural areas, from the city, from all over, and a lot of them are going to be rural and now working at the behest of, I, I think we could just see, like, conflict, chaos. Politically, <clears throat> they don't have much power, the red, the red part of New York. And it's almost like New York City has already seceded from the rest of the state mm. because they've locked out. Not to say that everyone who's red has not been vaccinated, but if you're not vaccinated, you're not allowed in that city anymore. You can't right. do anything. I have a friend went to eight different bars in the past two days, turned away wow. at all of them, went to her favorite cafe, Oof. told, oh, we'll serve you if you sit out, outside, yep. out there. That's what they said when I called. So they've I, locked out everybody yeah. else. I, I don't know what, how much political wow. sway they have. I don't even know if they care about the city. They act like it's not there. That's a good point. We didn't even talk about it. New York City has basically already said, yeah. these people are not welcome here. And yeah. that's a large portion. I think half of Republicans are not vaccinated. Yeah, that means like straight up Trump supporters, the staunch supporters of Trump are completely cut off from New York City mm -hmm. and Los Angeles and New Orleans and San Francisco. Yeah. All of these cities that are rolling this out. No zoos, this no is cafes, secession. no restaurants. Yeah, they've 
they've manufactured it in a way where it's not you don't have to say secession the but weird, they've kicked right. you out the weird part is like back in the day you'd have a city block would secede from another city block it'd be territory but now it's kind of ideology like mm. Mm. You, too many people live close together that have different ideologies so you can't you know like you said the big city in, in texas is democrat but all the surrounding areas is republican so I, I think rather than a secession which would be like shattering a crystal crystal informed structure you'd have to somehow alter the way they interact which this these COVID restrictions seem to be doing yeah Vaccine and i should also say that there's a lot of people in new york city who are also either vaccinated and against the mandates or not vaccinated doesn't mean they're red or blue but yeah. they're fighting like i know mm -hmm. people who are working in sanitation who are fighting really hard to keep their jobs. You know, this is interesting. We didn't even consider this when having these conversations about secession, that there could be people whose secret intention is the breakup of the U.S. and they do it through laws they know are partisan that will result in a soft secession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meaning New York City has basically said MAGA not welcome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been listening to Alex. Alex Jones did, um, he was on Sydney and Elijah's show and mm -hmm. then he went on... Uh, gosh, where did he go? Crowder? On? Yeah, he went on Crowder and they were talking. I watched a little bit of that and I was fact checking what he was talking about. And Klaus Schwab, really, I mean, since for decades, he's been intending to make like a corporate global or he's, he's like saying it. Yeah. Governments aren't effective enough. We need corporations to work with governments to govern the world now. Pretty sure that's like Mussolini's fascism. Definitely it's fascism when you when you collude corporations and governments. But I think yep. that there's this outside foreign entity that's doing this to the United States because the United States is very, very unique and we need to preserve it, in my opinion. But other forces that doesn't register with Klaus. He's not an American. He never was. So it's a foreign concept to him what we have. here. Well, you, you heard what Jack Dorsey said. Uh, you know, it, it's a cliche to, to bring up the Dorsey podcast with Rogan that we did. But Jack said we are working. We, we, we care to a global audience, not an American one. And right there, it's like, okay, he is telling us that their intention is to subvert the American will, that he doesn't view the nation as even existing. On top of that, you have people like Bernie Sanders. He, he tweeted out, it's two senators should not be able to stop 48 senators and 210 congressmen and women. It's like, Senator Sanders, there's 52 senators in opposition mm. to you, but he doesn't view the other half of the country as being part of the equation. Mm -hmm. So he's outright like, you are not a part of this. And then you, you, you take a look at the, how, how big tech acts. It feels like it's funny when, it, when we have that, we, we had some guy super chat saying that, you know, we, we on this show and the friends of this show are radicalized. And I'm like, we are the ones who are like America, American history, constitution, liberty. That's not radicalizing. That's status quo. Mm -hmm. That's being like this country is about defending civil rights, granting them over time and protecting the individual. Now we have a growing faction of internationalists, and they say they are authoritarians, and they say that, well, they lie about that because they don't want to admit it, but they show us they are. And it feels like perhaps we get this wrong when we talk about the culture war and we say left versus right or authoritarian versus libertarian. It is the soul of America versus the conquering forces which are destroying it. And the conquering forces make up tens of millions and, are be and control the institutions. I think the idea of <clears throat> saying the greater good has accelerated the idea of, of like this global community. Like I care for everybody, but people who are saying greater good lately, they're also telling me that they don't believe in things like borders. Mm. And so America doesn't, it's an idea now. It doesn't exist, right? It's, it's everybody right. else outside, um, which we should all care about people, but they've erased the borders. I think people need to understand there's not going to be like an, any kind of, internationalism i mean that's what the left literally calls they don't call it globalism right will not actually happen they don't they don't understand that they are selling themselves out these american leftists who are like i believe in internationalism and it's like okay well, well what will really happen is that the global powerful elites with with powerful military forces will just centralize their authority in their own country and everyone else will be subjugated right. it's not going to be like a one world government it's going to be the hunger games with capital city that they live in, well guarded and protected, and then you will lose everything and you'll be happy. Hmm. So That's they say. Even more terrifying is it's, they don't even care about the governments half the time, it's the corporations that they want to govern. Like, it makes sense. Corporations can function uh, like, like authoritarian machines. They yeah. can distribute resources um, at their own whims. And they can shut you off if they want, you know, socially. They'll erase terrible. you. It's incredible yeah. how someone can get banned off of all these social media networks and then have their bank account shut down by PayPal and Visa and, and like all at once, like within a day, it can yep. happen to someone that's in completely, I mean, not, I don't like the word anti-American, but I mean, it's, it's the antithesis of, of like 
of individual freedom and liberty. Like we're, we're supposed to create a government to protect our ability to communicate and socialize. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'll say this. If America cannot survive this, it doesn't deserve to. Mm. If, mm. if America does not have the, the, the resolve, the strength, the will, and the fortitude to survive the authoritarianism that it's sweeping across this country, then it, then it shouldn't. One thing that could happen is it could take over this thing, and then it's like we're under another corporate monarchy for the next X amount of years, and then there's another revolution, or we can resist it and avoid that tyranny. At what point do they start actually resisting? There, this is a form of resistance just by talking about it and pointing out like, yeah. hey, Klaus Schwab wants to have corporations govern you. Right. That's, that's a form of resistance. And I don't think the pressure will ever stop. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm. When, do we, when do we stop resisting? I guess it's, The censorship the is my biggest problem when it comes to like erasing voices. I think people should be able to say what they want and we could debate that. And, the, you know, I, I always talk about the immune system of your ideas. It can only get better if you put it out there to fight something that you might not believe in but you hear an idea, maybe it makes your idea stronger or you learn you were wrong, right? If you censor all these voices, you don't have that anymore. Then you're just in a corner and you can only say one thing and then ideas stop growing. Well, then the powerful elites can say what they want. Yeah. And that's what'll happen. For sure. And, and, that's, and that's what it means to have corporate rule. It's great it advertising. Means, you know, corporate rule, it's, 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 you know, honestly, it is communism. And it's not, it's like, it's like neo-futuristic communism. They don't take over by force they take over by selling you things you like. They take over by convincing you to give up your rights. And then eventually there's a corporation with a chairman and they can decide you have to do X if you want access to Y. You, if you want food, then you work for us. Oh, it's a private company. We can do what we want. So when, cor- when, when corporation X is more powerful than the government and the, and the government can't protect its people, the government and the corporation controls where you can go and what you can say and they do in many ways, then eventually you are just a part of an authoritarian dictatorship. I don't care what you call it. Mm-hmm. Corporations don't grant you the same, the, uh, you know, don't protect your rights. They don't care. You work for a fast food restaurant, they can ax you at any moment. Now, there are some laws on the public side to protect you, but the public side is just, they're, they, they're, they're, they're colluding together. And if you think you have job security at a corporation, wait till they automate your role and want to cut back on their overhead. And then you, know, you don't have really any job security. There's nothing, pre- not that you have job security by nature, but mm-hmm. it's not going to like enhance your ability to work, working for a corporation as opposed to government. Yeah, people aren't working. I drove down here. Mm-hmm. I, saw a pan- I saw a Panera somewhere. They were, they were closed, understaffed. Yeah. Sign on the door. Sorry. I've been in this pandemic, this one like a ton of times on the way down. It's cascade failure, man. Yeah. When when one store has 10 people working and that's there and, and they're like slightly above the staff they need for operation. And then one person says, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Or I have to move. My family's moving because of COVID. Right. Now they're down to nine people and they're like, okay, now we're pushing it. Everyone's working a little bit more than they'd like to, but we can maintain this. And then someone goes, I didn't sign up for this. I don't get paid enough. I quit. Mm. Now they're understaffed. Then the people are just like, dude, I can't work 60 hours. I need a day off. I quit. And then there's no one left. And they say, with only five people, we can't pl- keep this place open. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. Have a nice day. You're all fired. So it's the death of the smaller businesses. <clears throat> people don't want to work, but they worship corporations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and the country will become the corporation. Now, it's happening. Yeah. It's going to be like idiocracy with Costco. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, Go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.